Hi YouTube, this is Mike Shackelford, also known as the Wizard of Odds, and the purpose of today's video will be to teach you how to play Baccarat. And I will be doing it on the demo game found at my website, Wizard of Odds. Now to begin, let me say that Baccarat is a real easy game to play. All you need to do is just jump in and make a bet on the banker or the player. And if you want to, you can also bet on a tie, and sometimes there will, will be other side bets as well. But the base game is just the banker and the player. Now let me pause for a minute and say that explaining Baccarat can be real confusing with the terminology. When I say you can bet on the banker and the player, don't think of this as you being the player and the dealer being the banker. No, these could be called anything. These could be called heads and tails, the Patriots and the um, Ravens, anything you want. Banker and player are just arbitrary terms. So I hope I made that clear. You can bet on either one. Now, let me, let's just jump right in and start playing, shall we? So I'm gonna click on the $100 chip, place it on the banker, and then I'm gonna click deal. Now the way the game starts is the dealer will give two cards to each side. Now, let me explain the value of the cards. Twos through nines are worth pip value. For example, a two is worth two points, a three is worth three points, and so on. An ace is worth one point, and tens and face cards are all worth zero points. So, to calculate the value of a whole hand, what you do is you add up all the point value of all the cards in that hand. If it's more than 10, then you divide that total by 10 and take the remainder. So for example, here we have four plus six, that does equals 10. You divide by 10 and you get a zero remainder, thus this zero here. That shows that the player hand has zero points. Over on the banker side, we have three points plus zero points. That's worth a total of three points. Now, what happens here is the player has to act first. And if the player has five or less points, then the player will take a third card. And I'm going to tell the game to deal that third card by clicking draw. So the player got a good card, nine. Four plus six plus nine equals 19. You divide that by 10 and you get nine. Thus, the player has the most points you can get in Baccarat of nine. Now, when the banker has three points, the banker will take a third card as long as the player's third card was not an eight. So the banker is going to draw two. I click draw and the banker got a four. So the banker's score is three plus zero plus four equals seven. Thus, the player wins with nine over seven, and I lost $100. So let's play another hand, shall we? Deal. <clears throat> okay, so let's see what we got here. The player has one point because one plus zero equals one, and the banker has seven points because one plus six equals seven. Now, as I said before, if the player has five or less points, then the player hand will take a card. So I'm gonna click draw. And <clears throat> the player got another good card, an eight for a total of nine. Now when the banker has a total of seven points, the banker is going to stay pat no matter what. Now you might say, Mike, why didn't the banker draw a card? He clearly is going to lose with only seven. At least if he draws a card, he'll have a shot at pushing. There is no free will in this game. In um, all the banker is allowed to do is to consider the third card of the player's hand. And the reason for that is the way this game is sometimes dealt in the high limit rooms is these the initial cards will all be dealt upside down. So the banker will only know about that third card. Thus, that's why the player wins again with a total of nine over seven. So let's deal another hand. Okay, now let me explain what happened here. The player has eight points, the banker has five. If after the first four cards are dealt, 
either side has an 8 or a 9, that is called a natural. Now if either side has a natural or both of them, there will be no more drawing. That freezes the whole game. Thus the player wins 8 over 5. Again, no drawing at all because the player got a natural. So the player has won three hands in a row now. So let's go in the banker again. Okay, so now the player has one point, the banker has four. So again, if the player has five or less points, the player is gonna draw a card. So the player drew a two. Now, when the banker has four points, the strategy is, maybe strategy is not the right word, the rules say that if this third player card is a two through a seven, then the banker will draw a third card as well. Indeed, this third player card was in the range of two through seven, so the banker is going to draw a card. Now, again, you might think, why would the banker draw a card? He already won four over three. It's just the rules of the game. He must draw a card with four points and the player drew a two. So here we go, draw, and the banker wins, nine over three. Now, pause. Why did I win $95 when I bet $100? The reason is that banker bets win even money less a 5% commission. Now, bets on the banker pay even money, and bets on the tie pay eight to one. That's just what everything pays. Now you might ask, Mike, why does the banker have to pay this commission and the player does not? It's because the chances of the banker winning are higher than the player winning. And it basically becomes comes down to that positional advantage of the banker hand acting last. Let me show you an option here how you can play this game I just scrolled up with this pull down menu I had it set to drawing cards after the initial four were dealt you can also choose to draw click the draw button after every single card or to just deal the whole hand automatically so I'm going to change it to that and then we'll play a little bit more all right let me put it exactly right there we go. Okay. Repeat deal. So here the player had a total of six, so he stood because the player will stand on six or more, and the banker had a total of two. And when the banker has two, he always draws a third card. Here the banker had a natural eight, so there was no drawing on either side. And I forgot to make a bet. So there we go. So here the player had a seven, so he stood. And the banker had a two, so as in the last hand, if the banker has a total of two or less, he will always draw a third card, no matter what the player did. So here the player had seven, so he stood, and the banker had a five. Now the rule here is that if the banker has five or less and the player hand stood, then the banker will draw a third card. In other words, if the player does not draw a third card, then the banker has the same strategy as the player in drawing a third card. So here Again, the player has seven, so he stands. The banker has zero, so he draws and gets a 10, so the banker stays at zero <coughs> and loses seven to zero. So here, both sides have a natural, and thus it's a tie. And on a tie, both the banker and the player bets push. And as I said before, if you bet on a tie, that will pay eight to one. So here the player had a five, so he drew and got an ace, and the banker had a total of two, in which case the banker also draws and got a two. So the player total is six, the banker is two, thus the player wins.
So here the player had a seven, so he stood, and the banker had zero, so he took a card. It turned out to be an eight, so the banker hand won eight over seven. So here the player had zero, so he drew and still ended up with a zero. The banker had zero, drew, and got a zero, so here is a rare zero, zero tie. So here the player had another zero, the banker had five. Um, yes, so if the banker has a total of five, he will draw if the player's third card was a four through a seven. Because the player's third card was not in that four to seven range, the banker stands pat. And in this case, the banker hand wins five over zero. So let me show you some other features of this game. If we click history, this shows the whole scoreboard. And I have a whole separate video that explains the scoreboard. These, this, this panel up here is quite easy, I'll explain that. A blue circle means a player win, a red circle means a banker win, a green circle means that it was a tie win. And if you see this shaded triangle in the upper right of the square, that means it was a natural win. And if you see a little dot in the corner, that means that there was a pair in the first two cards. So this tie win right here also would have um, ha the, the player's first two cards would have been, formed a pair. And the reason that's important is many tables have side bets on a player pair and a banker pair, but my game does not. And these other four panels get more confusing, and I explain that in my other video on Baccarat scoreboards, and I'll leave a link to that in the comments. And this panel here you won't see at the casino, but this shows how many of each rank is left in the deck and the exact probabilities of each event and the exact house edge of each bet. And these fluctuate up and down according to the composition of the rest of the shoe. Now card card excuse me, card counters don't get too excited. Baccarat is essentially not a countable game unless you have a computer. Um, if you don't, I wouldn't waste your time counting Baccarat. So that is, I hope you understood the rules. Let me show you the exact rules for when the banker draws a third card. Where we're at now is my Baccarat page over at Wizard of Odds. And I have a whole host of information about Baccarat, and I'm not going to go through it all. But I start here by explaining the rules, which I also did in this video, but if anything wasn't clear, feel free to read this over. And here's what I did not go over completely in the video. These are the Baccarat drawing rules. So this is the banker's score along the left column, and here's the player's third card. So it shows you uh, that if the banker has a total of two or less, he will always draw a third card. A D means draw. If the banker's total is three, and the banker's third card is an eight, then the banker will stand. Otherwise, the banker will draw on three. If the banker's total after two cards is four, and the player drew a two through a seven, then the banker will also draw. The banker will draw on five if the player's third card is a four through seven, and if the banker's total is six, he will draw against a player's third card of six or seven. So if you're a dealer, you, ha you absolutely must memorize that, and I'm sure they all have, but as a player, you actually don't need to know this. The dealer will handle all of that. So let me just close this by going over the odds in Baccarat. This is the odds for the banker bet. It shows that the probability of a banker win is 
about 45.9%, a player win is 44.6%, and a tie is 9.5%. After doing all the math, the player can expect to lose 1.06% of whatever he bet. So there you go, house edge of 1.06% on the banker. On the player, that house edge is 1.24%, and on the tie, it is a 14 point three six percent so you can see that compared to the banker and the player the house edge on the tie is huge and some tables as I mentioned before have a pair of side bets one on a player pair and one on a banker pair both of them pay 11 to 1 on a win and the house edge on those is 10 point three six percent and all this is assuming an eight deck shoe which is almost always the case now there are a whole host of other side bets in baccarat i'm not going to go over any of them there are just so many but i have a whole page on my website about baccarat side bets i've probably seen 20 30 of them and i go through all of them however a rule of thumb is avoid all of them avoid side bets in every game as a rule of thumb they are sucker bets just stay away and you should I should also mention that sometimes Baccarat is dealt what's called commission free that means that a banker win will pay the full way even money but there's always some take back it's typically that a banker win on seven will pay one to two or a banker win on six will push and those variants have different odds i explain them all on my site in the section on commission free baccarat let me close this video by saying something very important that keeping track of the shoe is a waste of time you will see everyone at the table either looking at the scoreboard like what you see here or doing it themselves on scorecards which the casino happily provides to the player because they know that it's a waste of time looking for trends and they happily feed into the player's incorrect notion that it helps. So if you were, look at this scoreboard right here. The last four hands have all been player wins. I tend to think people at the player would think, oh, there's a player trend going. And I tend to think most players would bet on the player in this situation right here, but trust me, it's a waste of time. Here is the correct strategy to Baccarat. It's very simple. Bet the banker every time. The banker has the lowest house edge at 1.06%. It's a little better than the player at 1.24. However, if it makes the game fun for you to bounce back and forth between the banker and the player in a futile attempt to look for trends, all right, I can't stop you, but please just don't bet the tie, don't bet the pairs, don't bet any of the other side bets. Bet the banker and player only. This will save you a great deal of money in the long run. That's the most important thing I've had to say in this whole video. So there you go. I could talk about Bakura all day long, but there you go. That's the basics. And thank you for watching YouTube. If you like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up and I will see you in another video. Bye.